I want to talk to you about a little known place with a little known people and of a little known language, the Gullah people, my people. I am from St. Helena Island, South Carolina, the place that was home to between 10 and 32,000 slaves. St. Helena Island is also the home to the first black school built in a Confederate state to educate ex-slaves, the Penn School. Named after Quaker activist, William Penn. The school was established in 1862, six months before the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. My great-grandparents, my parents, my grandparents attended the school there before it was repurposed in the late 1940s and became the Penn Center. I pass through Penn Center every day, just about not knowing its historical significance. See, it is also the location of the Hastings Gantt Cottage. cottage. I walk by this cottage many times as a child, peek through its windows, also not knowing the value of its historical significance. Although I left St. Helena Island 44 years ago, each time I passed by the area, I noticed that the, college was, the cottage was always well kept and not left unattended, like so many other buildings on the island. One day, Darlene and I decided to visit the Penn Center Museum. The attendants there knew me and mentioned that they had attended school at Penn with my parents. They also reminded me that I attended school with their children. Most of the artifacts in the museum were not historical to me. They were the tools that I watched people use and I also used myself growing up. I asked about the cottage in the back that was kind of hidden in plain sight. The attendant said, that was Dr. King's hideout. And I took this from the Penn Center website. It was former Atlanta Mayor Andrew Young in his role as leader of the SCLC who introduced Martin Luther King Jr. to the serenity and security of the coastal backwater that is Penn Center. King and his lieutenants, other luminaries of the civil rights movement, and countless unnamed activists met there with the LC SCLC at Penn five times between 1964 and 1967. It became a bastion of peace and a place of refuge where King could unwind, breathe freely, and express himself openly. King composed many of his speeches at Penn, including his I Have a Dream speech, which he wrote while staying in the Hastings Cottage, where he often retreated at Penn. According to Walter Mack, the record of him coming was kept secret, even from the local sheriff. They wouldn't tell anybody. You never knew who would want to hurt Dr. King. Penn Center provides us with a direct link to the African origins of slaves that occupied America's southeastern seaboard. It is a window to a place in which many African Americans emerged from bondage and set out on a new journey as free men and women. It is the place and a time to celebrate. Penn Center vividly embodies the American ideal of liberty and justice for all, and in every sense is a true historical national monument. To that end, President Barack Obama, by executive order, made a swath of Beaufort County, South Carolina, including the Penn Center, a national historical monument to the Reconstruction era, one week before he left office in January 2017. Thank you, Ernie.